Equilibrium is the condition where macroscopically a reaction appears to have stopped. The macroscopic concentrations or pressures aren't changing. But microscopically, there's a dynamic equilibrium. Products are changing into reactants, and reactants are changing into products. You can approach equilibrium in a variety of ways. In fact, if you look at a thermodynamic landscape, a landscape of stability, often reactions can sit in a rather unstable thermodynamic point, but they can sit there until there's a reaction that allows them to go to a stable thermodynamic point. And we've seen examples of this. For instance, if you look at water, the formation from hydrogen and oxygen, the H2 and O2 gases could sit in a balloon almost indefinitely without a spark. But thermodynamically, that's unstable. It's stable from the, from the sense of the reaction is extremely slow, but thermodynamically, the more stable form is water, the liquid. So when you get a spark, you'll form water, the liquid, and that is the stable equilibrium favoring the products. So this equilibrium constant, K, would be large. It would favor the products. K large means products in the numerator are large, reactants in the denominator small, giving you a large K. So large K means the reaction goes well towards products. Small k, the products are small and the reactants is large, so k is less than 1, for instance, would be a reactant stays on the reactant side, favors the reactants. Now, how can I approach this equilibrium state? I can do in this dramatic explosion. I can do it in a monotonic approach. That is, a reaction just proceeds. The reactants build up slowly and evenly. The products build up slowly and evenly. And you have a smooth approach. And that's very common. You can also have a reaction where there's a slow initial reaction and then a dramatic approach to equilibrium. So the rate of the reaction accelerates dramatically. And I can demonstrate that. Here's a color change reaction where the color change happens very slowly and then a rapid acceleration occurs in about 15 or 20 seconds. So let's see that happen. This should happen in about 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. There it is, a dramatic change approaching equilibrium and now this color will be constant. So equilibrium reached in a step. We could also reach equilibrium in an oscillatory fashion. Here's a chemical reaction where the reaction starts out rapidly and actually bypasses the equilibrium state, and then bypasses it again as it reverses, and then again as it reverses, going back and forth. So let's see that chemical reaction occur. So here's a chemical reaction, turns to yellow, forming, but then to blue as it goes by the products. And now it's going to come back to yellow in 3, 2, 1. There it is, back to yellow. And then I'll go back to blue. So I could plot that as an oscillatory approach to equilibrium. I go by the equilibrium condition, then by it again, then by it in the other direction. There's an overall envelope of reaching equilibrium, but it happens in an oscillatory fashion. There's another instance you could say, uh, imagine have a, an approach to equilibrium that's chaotic. That is, mathematically, it's very sensitive to the initial conditions. And the up and down oscillations are very difficult to predict mathematically. But again, there'll be an envelope, a lot of changes, but an envelope of approaching equilibrium over time. All reactions, if you wait long enough, will approach the equilibrium. The thermodynamically favored state is the favored state at long times. So we expect favored states to occur if we wait long enough. So several ways to approach equilibrium. Either way, they're dynamic. Sometimes we have to wait a long time for them to get there. But a dynamic equilibrium that's stable macroscopically are the properties of equilibrium.